This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So if you need a website, a domain, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace and use the discount code Andrew Marr. G'day there guys. Well, I'm headed down south. I'm currently on Bass Highway and I'm around about 30 minutes out of Nana. A couple of years ago I did a video on uh, photographing a secret waterfall and I'm not too sure whether I found it. I found a waterfall, a little waterfall, but the waterfalls around here are pretty hard to find. We don't get a lot of rain in Western Australia and so therefore our waterfalls don't run for very long. But we've had one of the wettest winters we've had here in Western Australia for the last 20 years, I think. So if the waterfalls are going to be running, they're going to be running now. We're currently at the beginning of September, so right at the end of winter. On this trip, I've got a secret weapon though. I'm meeting up with a local, a mate of mine called Mark Rogers. I've mentioned him on the channel before. He does some beautiful shots around Western Australia and he knows the Southwest really, really well. I'll link his Instagram in the description of this video so you can check out his Instagram feed. Gorgeous photos. And he reckons he's got one or two waterfalls that I might be interested in photographing. So that's what we're going to do and I can't wait. I'm really excited and I'm so pleased that you're coming along for the ride. Alright, so we've made it down to the first waterfall that, uh, that Mark's showing me and it is a beautiful waterfall. Uh, Mark was just saying that a couple of years ago they actually cleared out a whole part of the pine forest. Uh, there's a lot of pine forest around this area that they've uh, grown for logging and uh, they've logged it kind of pretty much just behind, uh, behind you, behind the camera there. But as you can see behind me we've still got the natural, uh, the natural bush. And luckily, a lot of the uh, waterfall, which you will hear, which is to my right, the face of the waterfall is facing you. So the, the backdrop is going to be this natural bushland, which is going to be quite nice. And it's an interesting waterfall because there's a couple of different elements to it. Well, there might be even three waterfalls within the one. There's a little creek that uh, is feeding into the waterfall just above, above me. And then if I just pan around here, you'll see this here, which is a middle-sized waterfall. And then this merges into another waterfall just further below. That's actually quite a, quite a tall waterfall. It goes down a fair way. Uh, so that might be something that I, uh, that I have a look at later on. But I'm really keen to have a look at this waterfall to start off with and see whether I can uh, make a photo of it. So I'm going to set up get the GFX out and see whether I can compose something and uh, you might be able to see that I've got actually some quite harsh light behind me we've got some cloud that's hopefully going to just break up that that sunlight a little bit uh, because if I get too much sunlight straight onto the waterfall 
I'm going to get too much glare. So I'm definitely going to need a polarizer. But with the cloud comes the rain as well. So that's another element that we are just dodging around. Uh, but hopefully that won't hang around for, for too long. Mark is on the other side of the river or the creek and he's having a wonderful time in amongst the, uh, the black berries there. He's been to this location a few times and he's been eyeing off a particular shot that he thinks might work. So um, it's not going to be easy for him to get into the position that he wants, but he's trying to get a spot where he can get both of these waterfalls, this one behind me and the one below. I think I might cheat a bit and uh, just before I leave, go back to the car, grab the drone, and I might actually take a drone shot and uh, see whether I can get both waterfalls in. Anyway, let me get set up and uh, I'll take you through the composition that, uh, that I find. because all this rock here is quite wet and slippery. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, I like, I like this. I've got a rock face and the waterfall is kind of making a bit of a zigzag down this rock face before it hits this bottom third and splashes out. And the water that's coming out, the foam is coming straight out towards me. So I think at a slightly slower shutter speed, that might look quite good. It'll create a, a beautiful pattern in the foreground, which is just going to instantly draw you in, I think. So I think around about here is going to be the right spot to set up. So my composition here actually isn't all that difficult. I've come out so um, I'm right in front of the the waterfall. So the waterfall is coming straight over the rocks, making its way as a zigzag kind of shape over the rocks and then hitting the water and then the foam is coming straight out towards me. So I'm using that as my foreground, so the pattern that it's making on the surface of the water in front of me and that's going to just draw your eye in to the actual waterfall itself. The only thing that I've had to really consider with the composition is this um, blue gum uh, or eucalypt on my right hand side. It's kind of leaning over a little bit which meant that I had to get down a little bit and across just so that the tree didn't cross or interfere with the waterfall itself. And the way that it bends, the way that the water falls down, there's a little bit of a kink in it which is quite nice where the, where the leaves of the eucalypt, I haven't got the entire um, tree in the frame, but the branches and the leaves, some of the leaves kind of um, fall into the shot. So, look, you know, it looks, it looks pretty good. There's another eucalypt on the face of the rock where the waterfall's falling down and they kind of merge into the, into the one, um, which is quite nice. And just the way that the second eucalypt is growing out of the rocks. It's pretty nice to have right alongside the waterfall. I think it'll make a nice added feature, but the main feature of course is the waterfall. So I'm at ISO 100. Um, I've got the GFX 100S here of course with the 32 to 64 mil lens. Um, I've got the Nifty version six on the front and I've got the polarizer on as well. Of course I need the polarizer because that wet rock when the sun comes out I get all this glare and, and stuff like that so that that polarizer pretty much deals with that uh, that glare which is good knocks down the light just a few stops but I've got heaps of light here um, I haven't got a six stop or a three stop or a ten stop on just using the natural light um, my aperture is at 16 uh, and with ISO 100 at the moment, I've got a shutter speed of a quarter of a second. Now, I've just taken a shot at a third of a second, and I just felt like there was just a little bit too much water coming coming down that, that waterfall. Uh, so it captured it too much, or well, there was too much water for the third of a second shutter speed. So I just quickened it up to a quarter of a second. And on the 
back, I think I prefer the quarter of a second. But what I'm probably going to do is I'll take one at two thirds of a second and probably take one at half a second. And then maybe uh, at the other side, a quarter of a second, a fifth of a second, and a sixth of a second. Just so that I've got all of those images and I can pick the, the one that I like the most uh, in Lightroom when I, when I check out the images on the computer. Beautiful location though. Got to be really careful because if I slip, I'm going to slip back and uh, straight into the drink there. I'm not too sure where Mark is. Oh no, there he is. Mark's still making his way through the, uh, the reeds and the, the blackberry bush, which has got thorns on it. So uh, it looks like he's found a spot though. So I'll be interested to see what he, in the end, picks up. So I'm going to take some of those other shots that I said once the light, uh, once the sun goes behind a cloud, take a couple more of those shots and then I might venture off to maybe another composition. a portrait shot uh, only because what I've got right on the outside really doesn't add a lot to the image so I might just uh, switch the camera around to portrait and uh, get just a little bit more of the water down the front here. Before we get to the next image, I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. No matter what level you're at with your photography, a website is a fantastic tool to help you grow, both as a photographer as well as a business. And Squarespace has got to be the easiest platform for building amazing looking websites that I've come across and I've been using them for years. The way that the templates are designed, they make your images stand out without you having to do anything. Just upload them, no need for any code. And you can start building an audience by just adding a blog. And in just a few clicks, you can be ready to be publishing posts about your own photography journey. Your website can also be extended with an online store that integrates easily with payment gateways. So the process of selling a product or even a service is made really easy. So head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. That'll give you heaps of time to set up your website. And when you're ready to launch, make sure you go to squarespace.com forward slash Andrew Marr to get 10% off your first purchase. in front that should make a really nice shot now just a little bit too much wind that's all right so I found another composition here and uh, I'm really pleased with this this is the area that I'm standing at the moment this is the area uh, that used to have all these pines and it's been cleared out makes it a little bit easier to walk through and it's given way to some of these reeds and then this gorgeous purple flower that I should know the name of. If I can find it, I'll put it down the bottom. Um, it's quite common in, in Western Australia because we're just entering wildflower season and uh, WA's just got to have the, the best wildflowers in Australia, probably in the world, to be honest. Um, we're very, very blessed over here. And I've just got a carpet of purple flowers in front of me. So as I was walking down, I was planning on just going a little bit closer to the creek, but just in front of me is this gorgeous vista. I've got these purple flowers in front of me. I've got a few of the reeds that hopefully uh, some of them might actually be in, uh, in the shot that you can see there. 
Um, so I've got a couple of the reeds just at the back of the carpet of, of purple flowers. And then beyond that, I've got the waterfall. This is the major part of the waterfall. And the way in which I've composed the waterfall is I've got this tree, which is uh, growing just in front of the waterfall, really nicely framing it on the left-hand side. And then I've got some of the rock on the right-hand side. So it's quite a nice frame, as well as this gorgeous foreground in front of me. And so the color is really gonna draw you in. Um, and so I've dedicated almost uh, a third, maybe even a half of the image to the purple flowers and then the reeds, and then positioned the waterfall probably in the, the top half, maybe even in the top, top third there. I've given myself a little bit of width on the outside. This is a 100 megapixel camera, so I can crop crop in the sides if I find that they're not all that interesting and I've got plenty of, of pixels to play with here. So um, it's one of, the, one of the good things about this camera. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for the right amount of light. Um, just a little bit of light on this is actually really, really nice because it's dappled, not by the clouds, but from some of the trees over here on the left-hand side, which is out of shot. Um, and then, the, yeah, the, the trees are dappling the light, the, the clouds are dappling the light. I'm also waiting for this, we've got a very slight breeze. It's only, only very, very small, uh, but the smallest whisper of, of breeze, and I've got some of the reeds and some of the flowers are just moving around a little. So if I'm patient, uh, there are moments where it's absolutely still, and that's where I'll take my shot. In the meantime, I'll be taking plenty of test shots just to make sure that I'm at the right uh, shutter speed. Which, by the way, um, I'm on ISO 100. My aperture is at 18. At the moment, I'm at a quarter of a second. So I'm pretty happy with that. At a quarter of a second, if the reeds or the flowers are moving around in the breeze just a little bit, they'll come out a little bit blurred. So I'll just wait for everything to die down, which is pretty much now actually. So I'll quickly focus and I'm focusing on a rock right next to the waterfall and then take my shot. Once again, I've got the polarizer engaged, just taking off some of the brighter areas and the glare off the face of that rock and it's just drenched in water from the waterfall. So getting that nice and dark and that'll really bring out that waterfall. It'll really make that the white foam and patterns that the waterfall is making really, really punch out um, from that rock. So I'm really happy with that. So now I've taken that shot, what I'm thinking is I might try and get a little bit closer and find a composition that's perhaps got less of the flowers in it. I've bashed my way through the bush to get to this spot. Unfortunately, there's this blackberry bush, which is a weed around here but it's ferocious and it just takes over everything. It's really unfortunate. And it's got these thick stems and massive thorns that cut into your leg and rip your pants, unfortunately. But I think it's worth it because I found this rock, which I'm perched up on top of, it gives me a little bit of elevation. I'm looking down just a little bit onto where the, the water is falling. And I've managed to compose this in portrait mode at 32 mil. And I'm really quite happy with it because I've pretty much got it coming out of one corner, the right hand corner, and coming down diagonally to pretty much the, the middle. And then the pattern that's, uh, that the water's creating on the water goes off to the left hand, the bottom left hand side. And I've got this rock centered, which is a really nice anchor 
I've got a few of these blackberry bush leaves just right at the bottom of my uh, frame. But there's this really nice green moss growing on the rock. So I've got that right at the centre. I've got the water kind of coming down and splashing. Looks like it's coming down on top of that rock. You know, the only thing that I'd like to change is I've got this dead tree. When they were clearing this area, they've obviously cut down a pine and then just left it there to die. And it encroaches in on the right-hand side. But, you know, it is what it is. I've tried to position it so that it's not obvious. You'll see it on the image because I won't bother trying to get rid of it. Uh, but it blends a little bit into the rock, which is not too bad. So the water's coming, coming from the right, coming through to the middle, and then tailing off to the left-hand side. Um, ISO 100, aperture is 11. I've had to widen the aperture up, and that's because it's just getting a little bit darker. The, the sun is getting lower, but I'm getting further and further deeper into this kind of uh, waterfall here and my shutter speed is a quarter of a second uh, because of the, just the amount of water here. A quarter of a second is really quite nice because I still want a little bit of detail in that water. That's what I'm going for. Uh, just make sure that the polarizer is taking out that glare. That's it there. Nice you get a lot more contrast and detail in the rock that way. And then it's just a matter of waiting for the right light, which is pretty close to now. So I'm gonna take this shot. Call that a day. Might go back to the car. Ouch. Grab the drone. Have a bit of a fly. Interesting to see what this waterfall looks like from above. <laughs> <laughs> 